Target has your whole family covered. Target has been a staple in American culture for decades. It's where you can find everything from groceries to clothes to home goods. But in recent years, Target has been struggling. The company announcing it'll shut down nine stores by the end of October. It has lost over 10% of its market share in the past five years, and the company has been closing stores. So what's going on? Why is Target declining? Target, that major U.S. retailer, losing billions of dollars in market value over the last couple of weeks. Well, giant Target lost $10 billion of market value in 10 days. In this video, we'll uncover some eye-opening facts that many people may not be aware of, shedding light on the forces shaping the fate of this retail icon. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Target is an American retail corporation that operates a chain of discount department stores and hypermarkets. It is the sixth largest retailer in the United States and a component of the S&P 500 index. The company is one of the largest American-owned private employers in the United States. However, in recent years, Target has been struggling. Same-store sales have been declining and the company has been closing stores. There are several reasons for Target's decline, but before we get into those reasons, let's look at its birth and how it rose to fame. The story begins in the quaint year of 1902 when George Dayton, a visionary and perhaps a bit of a shopaholic, decided to get on a retail adventure. He set his sights on a modest dry goods company called Goodfellow Dry Goods. Located in the heart of Minneapolis, with a wink to the past, he gave it a fancier moniker, renaming it the Dayton's Dry Goods Company in 1903. It had a nice ring, signaling the dawn of something big. In 1910, they simplified the name to the Dayton Company to keep things light and breezy. But the real Target magic started to shimmer in 1962 when they flung open the doors of their very first store in Roseville, Minnesota. George Dayton's retail expertise was like a fine wine, only improving with time. By 1967, the parent company decided to rebrand itself again and emerged as the Dayton Corporation, a clear signal that they were gearing up for the retail revolution. Dayton Hudson Corporation. In 1969, Dayton Corporation and the J.L. Hudson Company decided to join forces, creating a retail powerhouse known as the Dayton Hudson Corporation. The new entity wielded power over several department store chains, including Dayton's, Hudson's, Marshall Field's, and Mervyn's. If you were a shopper in those days, you'd feel the repercussions of these retail tectonic shifts. But wait, the retail roller coaster had one more loop to throw. In 2000, the Dayton Hudson Corporation rebranded itself, and the name Target Corporation was unveiled. It was like a sly wink, telling the world, call us Target, and we'll hit the bullseye of your shopping desires. Fast forward to 2006, and Target opened up the P-Fresh store prototype, shaking things up once more. The goal? To make grocery shopping hip and happening. This concept brought perishable and frozen foods, baked goods, meat, and dairy under the same roof as those chic clothes and stylish home goods. You could now grab a cart and some broccoli while picking up your favorite pair of jeans. In 2015, CVS Health decided to join the party and acquired Target's pharmacies and clinic businesses for a cool $1.9 billion. It was a prescription for success, with Target pharmacies morphing into CVS Health pharmacies and Target clinics transforming into Minute Clinic, offering a one-step shopping and health experience. And then there's Super Target, the superhero of hypermarkets. These colossal stores first burst onto the scene in 1995, taking the Target experience to a whole new level with an entire grocery department. The modified tagline, Eat Well, Pay Less, started echoing in the shopper's ears in 2004. Super Target was designed to be the ultimate destination for groceries and stylish finds. Target was riding high with their red bullseye, but even giants have their moments of decline.
Target's fiscal second quarter net income, quite the feat at $835 million, was up from a mere $183 million the previous year. However, the revenue took a tumble, a sharp drop from the same period in 2022 when they were dealing with a surplus of inventory. The e-commerce sales, once soaring, took a nosedive by 10.5% from the previous year, and same-store sales fell by 4.3%, like a bullseye missing its mark. To make matters worse, Target's Circle app felt the pinch with a drop in daily active users, indicating a downturn in digital orders. As if that weren't enough, the retailer's inventory levels were 17% lower than the previous year, with a 25% decrease in struggling categories like fashion and home furnishings. The recent controversy surrounding their Pride Month merchandise didn't help matters either. In response to these challenges, Target had to make some tough decisions, slashing its full-year profit outlook and pointing fingers at the return of student loan repayments as another blow to discretionary spending. Oliver Chin, managing director at TD Cohen, observed, Overall discretionary softness is still apparent among Target shoppers. Some categories like essentials and beauty manage to keep their heads above water, helping to offset the decline in discretionary categories like home and apparel. But that's not the end of Target's troubles. The fallout from various controversies and declining sales have created a storm of headwinds for the retail giant. Randy Mercer, chief product officer at One World Sync, noted the decline in sales, saying it was deeper than expected, even without inflation, and amounted to about 8% or 9% down from the previous year. An increase in store theft also added to their woes, with Target reporting a staggering 20% growth in theft, which is high for any retailer. Overnight, Philadelphia police responding to a chaotic scene. Large crowds of young people looting stores and damaging property. That's why they also announced the closure of nine stores in various places. However, it didn't push customers concerned about safety to shop on Target's e-commerce channel. Even Target's once shining circle app in which they had invested heavily is now on the decline. According to mobile analytics and intelligence from GWS, the number of daily active users on the app fell by 8.6% over the past quarter. So what are the major reasons for this impactful downfall? Is it making mistakes in marketing or other strategies? Let's find out. Target found itself in hot water due to the boycott steaming from concerns over LGBTQ and transgender-friendly kid clothing. The controversy caused the retail giant to lose approximately $1 billion in market value within a week. While it wasn't solely about transgender clothing, there were incidents of people vandalizing rainbow merchandise in stores, forcing Target to remove some products for safety reasons. This episode illustrates how sensitive societal issues affect a company's bottom line, but this isn't just about clothing. It's about the broader landscape of retail and consumer attitudes. It's a reflection of the current climate where retail in general is facing headwinds. The entire sector is experiencing some jitters, leading to overcorrections in stock prices. So Target's woes are not unique, but part of a larger trend. The primary reason for Target's decline can be attributed to shifting consumer spending patterns driven by rising costs and inflation. With more than half of its merchandise falling into the discretionary category, including clothing, home decor, electronics, toys, and party supplies, Target has been heavily impacted by consumers' preferences for essential purchases such as food, household necessities, travel, and various services. This shift away from discretionary spending, particularly among the middle-income households that form Target's core customer base, has resulted in a significant drop in the company's performance. Additionally, the general retail and consumer jitters affecting the entire retail sector have led to a collective overreaction in the stock market, further contributing to Target's decline. Now, when you hear organized crime, you might think of mobsters and heists, but in this context, it refers to highly coordinated theft in stores. We're talking about groups of individuals working together to steal merchandise on a large scale. 
The National Retail Federation has been keeping an eye on this and they've noted that this type of criminal activity is not only on the rise, but also becoming more sophisticated. In some places, it's gotten so bad that major retailers like Office Depot, The Container Store, Nordstrom, and even Whole Foods have decided to close their doors due to safety concerns for their customers and employees. Now, these companies don't always come right out and say that it's theft causing the closures, but it's a significant factor. Target, like many other retailers, has had to respond to this wave of organized retail crime. They've beefed up security in their stores. If you've been a regular Target shopper, you might have noticed more products locked up and increased security presence. While these measures are essential for curbing theft, they've made the shopping experience less convenient for loyal customers. CEO Brian Cornell has been vocal about the impact of retail crime on Target's business. He mentioned that theft is an urgent issue and has caused a whopping $500 million increase in the company's missing inventory for the year. He's also noted a significant increase in store incidents involving violence or threats of violence between January and August. However, here's where it gets interesting. Publicly available crime statistics don't always align with Target's claims. They don't definitively show a significant increase in nonviolent shoplifting or violent robberies in the areas where stores are being closed. Jim Joyce, a spokesperson for Target, acknowledged that missing inventory known as shortage has nearly doubled since 2019. This increase coincides with a substantial rise in fraud both online and in stores. Target's struggle to adapt to the rapidly evolving e-commerce landscape has been a significant factor in its decline. While online shopping has become increasingly popular, Target has faced difficulties competing with e-commerce giants like Amazon. Their e-commerce platform experienced a decline in sales, down 10.5% from the previous year, highlighting their inability to keep up with shifting consumer preferences. Target's inventory management has been far from optimal. They found themselves holding 17% lower inventory than the previous year, a move that signaled difficulties in forecasting consumer demand accurately. It could lead to stockouts, dissatisfied customers, and lost sales, all of which contribute to their decline. The tone of Target's latest earnings call has been described as defensive. The company seems to be focused on explaining its sporadic performance rather than outlining a clear strategy for a turnaround. This lack of strategic direction puts Target in a reactionary position and may hinder its ability to regain market share and financial strength. Target has been criticized for its poor customer service. Customers have complained about long wait times at checkout, difficulty finding help from employees, and a lack of responsiveness to consumer complaints. To improve its customer service, Target needs to hire more employees, reduce wait times at checkout, and make it easier for customers to find help. Target's customer base has traditionally been white, middle-class families. However, the demographics of the United States are changing. The population is becoming more diverse and more urban. Target needs to adapt to these changing demographics by offering products and services that appeal to a wider range of customers. In the recent years, Target has tried to expand its business into new areas, such as grocery and financial services. However, this has distracted the company from its core business of selling general merchandise. Target needs to focus on its core business and invest in improving its product selection, customer service, and digital business. So, if Target can address the challenges it's facing successfully, it could become a major force in the retail industry again. It has a strong brand, a loyal customer base, and a nationwide network of stores. With the right investments and changes, Target could become a one-stop shop for retail. What do you think about Target? Do let me know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe.